Uh, oh, there's John again. I, I uh, forgot to mention this. Uh, anytime, anytime you're working on on the water, you, you got to cover it with a plastic bag. So, so I, I get uh, 55 gallon garbage bags. Uh, I said 55 gallon, not 30, not 33. You see that? So they look like 55 gallon right there. Right. 55 gallon garbage bags you pick them up uh, hard, hardware store I don't think they're very much I, I, I don't know what they are I, I just buy them and uh, any, anytime you're you know you work on the motor when you're done working on the motor you cover it with the garbage bag the garbage bag is a little rip in it take the garbage bag you know get a 55 gallon garbage can and take the whole one and put it in the and that 55 gallon uh, garbage can because, like you said, that the motor key to the, any of these motors has got to be clean. So, anytime you're when you working on a motor, pull the garbage bag off, work on a motor. And when you're done working on a motor, garbage bag has to go back on. That's how you keep it clean. You know, everything everything that I do you know, has to have the garbage bag on. Uh, if it doesn't have the garbage bag on, then I got to clean it before I, before I put it in the motor. All right. I'll see you. Uh, John again. Oh, one one thing I, I forgot to discuss with you is uh, you know when when you have the block done, they're they're going to have to put in the cam bearings, um, and if they install the cam bearings correct uh, incorrect, uh, you'd be in a lot of trouble. Uh, here, here's the cam bearing. You know that they have to be they have a special tool and they they put them in the block, but the, the cam bearing itself it has a, a slot in it. Okay. And then you have an oil drain line that goes from the main that goes down and, and oils your cam bearing. So if they don't line that slot up correctly, then uh, that whatever journal, cam journal, that they didn't line up the slot correctly to will, will, will not get the proper oiling. Okay. And I've, I've had this in the past too. That's why I want to explain to it. And I'm going to show you is when you get the block back from whoever's putting the cam bearings, and, and you got to get you got to get a uh, a mirror, you got to get a flashlight, and you got to look at every single one of them. You got to look at every single cam bearing to make sure they're all lined up. And there's there's one of them. I forget which one it was. I think it's three or four. It's really hard to see without a. Uh, uh, a, uh, a mirror and a flashlight and and that was the one that they 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 had in the wrong way so I'm gonna try to show you here okay so this is this is the cam bearings of the block see here's the cam bearing oh, I'm gonna show you here my flashlight here okay cam bearings all gotta be installed in the block if you see that it's got a hole in it. Let's see, show you that or not. You see the slot in the cam bearing? Well, there's a hole. Right? There's a hole. The hole goes from the bottom of this number one main and it's drilled all the way through and it comes out here. And that this is probably it. The oil, that's how the oiling system works is the oiling system this is priority main oiling system priority mains it means the oils the mains first everything else comes second but this is part of it as it pushes it down through it pushes it down to the cam bearing and if you look down through that tunnel you got to look at every single uh, cam bearing and make sure that that slot should be in the center of that oil it doesn't really matter if you if they offset it a little bit as long as that oil hole isn't blocked uh, then uh, you'll be okay like I said they could have you know because they, they the, the way the cam manufacturer is is you can be a little off and that doesn't matter as long as that little hole isn't being blocked so you take a light high power light again and you shine it through you put it 
crankshafts can't be in here, mains can't be on, and just put the light, you'll see a hole, there'll be a hole on the bottom of the main, it goes down to this, every single one, one through five, every single it will have it. <clears throat> you got one, two, three, four, five, five cam journals, all right? So for every, for every main journal, you'll have a cam journal, and you have to carefully look at every single cam bearing and make sure that that hole is lined up in there. Now some blocks have a cut, a notch in here, all the way in the middle of it. So if, if, if it has a, a notch in the block under the cam bearing, that means this could be installed anywhere it wants to be and the oil would still flow through. But this block does not have that. So this block, they have to be lined up exactly correct. I wanted to mention that to you because that's another thing you gotta look for. Very important to look for. Make sure that the cam bearings are lined up correctly. Okay, um, and then and then you see that that I, I done some work on this block. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's a, your oil. Um, that's for your oil pump. It's your pressure feed side on the oiling system. So it had a little from the factory. It had a a burr inside there, and I ground the burr out with a die grinder very carefully. And then, then in here, you know, I I ground that with the with the die grinder too, and a burr, and cleaned cleaned it all up, and made sure the oil was going to flow through here real nice. That's what you got to make sure the oil flows through here real nice. So um, that's that's something else that I did too. Um, all the returns on the block, you know, I, I touched up on the returns. Whoops, um, you know, your return lines here. Um, yeah, so anyway, so, okay. Until I see you again. All right, this is John again, um, uh, about the oil returns on um, something. I forgot that's very, very important, is uh, the oil returns on, on the block going from your cylinder heads down to the block. On this particular block, the holes didn't line up, and maybe that's why I got it so cheap on eBay. So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about, but I had to um, drill the holes by hand and, and drill them motor size and, and Anyways, it was it was pretty scary because you got water jackets in there and you got oil passages way in there. But I'll show you what I did here. Okay, so so this is this is the oil return. Okay, you see it. This is this is the oil return on this side. This is the oil return on this side. You can you can probably see that these these weren't. They, these weren't anywhere near anything like that. So what you want to do is you take your take your head gasket. Remember I was telling you about the comedic head gaskets. So on, and on this side, on the head gasket, I, I got driver's side, DS, and passenger side. And these have to go a certain way, you know. It says front. Front on. See, it says front on that the gasket. Front. So this must be driver's side. Put this on here like that. Yes. There you go. All right. And you got little dowels here. See the doll? Doll here. And doll here. Put the doll. Okay. So then, then you look. You look at your oil return. Okay. And make sure that the hole lines up with your with your head gasket. Because the head gasket's gonna when your head goes on on here. This is how it returns. From the from the valves uh, back down into the block, and if this is too small or if this is in the wrong location, these returns, all your oil will be up into the cylinder head, and uh, and never get down in the oil pan. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, standard volume, high volume pumps. I don't run high volume pumps. I don't run high pressure pumps. I run a standard pump, standard volume. 
All right, you guys run wherever you want to run. That's what I run. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> um, but the oil returns is very, very critical to check this out. Same thing, check it out in your head. We'll get more into that in detail. Um, but I run a standard pressure pump, standard volume pump. Don't run oversize scrolling rotors or anything like that. Standard volume, standard pressure. Okay, so so then, then you go back to this side. All right. And front passenger side. Yeah. The, the, the motor, the block fits front front of the nose, goes in the car like this. This is definitely passenger side. Just what I got written down there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But I got a PS. And these are like, these are the gaskets that I've been telling you about, Comatic. I've had these gaskets for, since I built the motor. And, and I run the same gasket. And you, can, you can see there that, you know, how I had to blend that by hand. I drilled it. It was scary. I had a little tiny hole in here. I was like, it's like the size of this. A little, little tiny hole. It wasn't big enough for the drain, so I, had to, I drilled it by hand. Trying to follow the original hole. And then the same thing with this is I this is so scary that you know it was so close to the, the oil passageway and everything else that that I, I I drilled a little bit oversized, but I was scared to hit something, you know, hit one of these these uh water jackets that I just blended the rest of it by hand. I just opened this up and said that's close enough. And this goes through here and it comes out it comes out here somewhere and yeah, I, I know it comes out it comes out in the bottom of the block somewhere anyways I know where I sort of know where it comes out at but uh, I, that's what I forgot to tell you guys about the return so put your head gasket on there look at your oil returns make sure they're lined up if they're not, not lined up you know maybe take it to somebody that really knows what they're doing about drilling this and lining these things up unless you want to you know chance it yourself it's it's kind of scary but that's what i did i had to i had to i had to fix all four not not one of them was right i had to fix all four but maybe that's the reason why i got the block so cheap you know it's because i might have been proud of, proud of part of the problem okay so that's that's another thing you gotta look at Like I said, I'm giving you all, all, all kinds of stuff. We haven't haven't even really scratched the surface. What what all I'm going to show you? Till next time. Okay, hold on, this John again. Okay, remember that number, two point four four one seven five. That's the number that I agreed on. You got the number from Clevite. It's right in the middle of the, the where you're. Clearances are supposed to be for your mains. 2.44175. So what uh, what we'll do is I'm going to show you the outside micrometer, and uh, we're going to put it in the vise and and uh, and and, uh, and show you exactly how I do it. So, anyways, I was talking about the the mains. Uh, so you set your mic up for 2.44175. All right. <clears throat> you can see that that's, I don't know if you can see that or not. But it's uh, 44175. Like I said, it's a, it's a two inch mic, so the two inches is already built in. So that's why you don't see the two in front of the 44175. All right. So then we take the mic, and we're gonna put it in the vise, believe it or not. I'm gonna put this in the vise and I'll show you. <clears throat> so I put the, the, the mic in the vise, with uh, in between two pieces of aluminum and um, and a an rag, 
so I don't hurt the outside micrometer. Anyways, there's a picture of it and the vise. Okay. And then, <coughs> and then you need your dial bore gauge. Because you've got to set your dial bore gauge to the outside micrometer. This is the dial bore gauge. Alright. I'm going to try to show you this if I can. Okay, I am uh, said so I got my outside micrometer in the vise. My dial bore gauge is, is, uh, has the right end piece in it to, uh, to get the uh, proper measurement here. Anyway, so what you do is you put the, the dial bore gauge in there between the mic. You gotta hold it real straight. It's gotta be straight this way, straight this way. It's gotta be, you gotta hold it real straight. The trick is to hold it, holding it straight. So then once you get this in here, then you have to spin this gauge and get it to zero. Because this is already set, 44175. And you want the dial bore gauge set the same as the outside mic. This is how uh, this is how you, you check the the main uh, the mains without the bearings in. This is how you start it. First you got it check your line home before you do anything. You've got to check the line home. Well, that's how you do it. So you set the dial bore gauge at 44175, which is going to be zero on the dial bore gauge. Once I get this, I'm going to hold it steady. That's why I got it in a vise. Hold it steady. Got to be exactly center. It's got to be parallel with the Outside mic. Right. Once you get the dial bar gauge set for zero, hold it steady in there. Okay, so now I got this set for what it's supposed to be 44175. I put this in between there, hold it steady, it reads zero. Alright, so now we're going to check and see how well our the machinist did our line honing on the mains before you can even think about putting in bearings. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Okay, uh, this is John again. Um, <clears throat> okay, getting back to uh, checking the uh, mains, um, I'm only going to do the number number one main because um, I've, I've done this so many times on this motor, I know exactly what they are, and I know they're, they're dead nuts, right? But I'm going to show you on, on <clears throat> how you would do it. You can get a glimpse of that. Hopefully you can see what's going on. Anyways, this is a Bill Mitchell block, four bolt mains. Um, the main caps have an arrow on them. They have to all be pointing towards the front of the block. Uh, you have to put AR, ARP Ultra Torque on all your studs. Uh, this stuff right here. It, ARP Ultra Torque. That's what I use. That's what you're supposed to use. So, after, um, <clears throat> we're, like I said, I'm only going to do one. I'm not going to do them all. Normally, you, you would have them all in here. You start with your center one, and uh, <clears throat> you start with uh, the big ones first. You know the ones that get these, the inner ones get torqued to a hundred pounds, the outer ones get torqued to seventy pounds. The little ones in the front that are, I think there's maybe three eighths, they get torqued to forty five. Uh, so when I start at the center one, okay. I'm going to first torque it at 20 pounds. I know a lot of guys do it in steps of three, but I do mine uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100s. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, five steps. So I would do the center one, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And then this one, same thing, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. This one, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Our one, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 
and then I start with my center ones on the outers. I do the same thing to 70, 20, 40, 60, and then go to 70. So anyways, I'm going to do this one. Um, <clears throat> as you see, there's, there's, no, there's no bearing here, all right? No bearing. So what I use is, uh, I use a piece of plastic, PVC, and a hammer to uh, put on the mains. If I could find my PVC, I would show you here. Uh, give me a minute. Okay, I got my uh, piece of PVC, it's all I use, and my hammer. So now th this is dowel. There's dowels that go into there. There's dowels on the block. Arrow facing towards the front of the block. They're also numbered. One, two, three, four, five. That's how it goes. All right, so all I do is I take my PVC, and uh, because it's dulled, it goes in. And I, I, don't, I don't tap very hard. It's nice and easy. Don't need much. A little persuasion. Oh, that sound means it's all the way down. Okay. So then I take my... Uh, <coughs> the ultra torque's already put on there. Ultra torque on the washers. Ultra torque on the nuts. Come on. Um, this block is all main studs, head studs, everything studs. Studs are as strong as you can get. Can't get any better than studs. That's why you see I'm using studs and not bolts. So anyways, okay. All ARP stuff. These go on. <clears throat> I got a snap on torque wrench. It's got a dial. I set the dial for zero. Alright. All I'm going to do is first I just snub it up a little bit. Also, the, the nuts have the ARP pointing up, not down. The ARP is pointing where it says ARP points up. Always points up. Flat side of the nut down. So I just give it a little snub, just like that, make sure it's even. Then I'll start. First knot, go to 20. There's 20. This one goes to 20. All right, so this one now I can go to 30. I can go, this is how I do it. I can go to 40 on this side. This side, obviously, I'll go to 50. This side, I go to 60. This side, I go to 70. This side will go to 80. This side will go to 90. My face is turning red. <laughs> this side is going to go to 100. This side will go to 100. Okay, now I do my other ones. Other ones are 45. Okay, so I do the same thing, sort of like you don't know, bring them down, sure all the way down. So this one I'm gonna start a lot smaller. This one I'm gonna start at 10. So that side's 10. 10. Maybe I'll go to 15. And this side I can go to 20. 25, 30, 35, 40, and 45. That's last, 45. That's what they're supposed to be. There's 45. There's 45. I said normally do all these without the bearings in them. We already set our dial board gauge. So 
So <clears throat> if the block's set right, we should read zero on the dial board gauge if it's if it's if it's uh, been line home correctly. We put this in here. Now roll it. I'm showing a half a thousandths on the small side. Half a thousands. So now I'll, I'm going to go back to my dial board gauge and make sure I had it straight or not. You know, might have been not so straight. Or it could be weather change. Could be, could be anything. This is aluminum block, so things move around. But half a thousands, I'm okay with it. That's what it is. But I'm going to go back and check my, my outside micrometer. Make sure that the dial board gauge is set correct.